this is Cross Beats Production. So in this tutorial, I want to talk a bit about mid-side processing um, and in the sense of mastering and mastering your track and using mid-side processing within Studio One to kind of bring out some of the ambience and stuff like that that may not have um, originally be um, heard in the track. So what I've done in this mastering project that I've got here, um, it's pretty, pretty in depth. I don't want to go through all the plugins, but for the most part, what I first off started doing was listening to the track, obviously analyzing it and um, just taking a whole, you know, trip through the track and, and figuring out what I need to do. When I was listening to the track, I kind of gathered that some of the, the sides that I needed to stick out, like for example, all the stuff like the reverb and stuff like that that really needed to come out, um, wasn't there enough. So what I did to create some more of that, um, that ambience that I knew was already in the track, um, I pretty much put it into mid-side mode within the splitter tool. So I've shown you guys this before many, many times, I think at least three times or two times or whatever I've shown you. Um, but basically what you do is you get your splitter tool, you put it on there, um, you then put a mix um, tool on there first, you put it into mid-side transform. So basically what happens is when you do that, it splits this section here to left to right. So left hand side is your mono, the right hand side is the sides. As long as you have the channel splits section collect, uh, selected there. The next thing then at the end, obviously you put another splitter tool on and um, you put it back into mid side. There's two ways of doing this as well. With the gain tool, usually you lose about 6 dB worth of gain in this process of doing it. Um, and that's due to the panning rule or the panning law. Um, so the 6 dB you can make up by putting gain into it or you could use other plugins within this splitting um, to do that. So what I did here on the sides, basically to go through it just briefly, uh, the EQ, I kind of got rid of a lot of the low end stuff. So you can see most of this low end is pretty much gone. I got rid of that with a shelf and also a high pass and a few other little uh, trinkets in there as well. Um, the next thing I did then was another um, EQ which I love Ozone 7 because of this fact that it has this uh, section in it. So it's got the matching EQ. I just wanted to quickly go over this, so I'm not going to go too far in depth into it. But basically it's got pink noise um, and it matches, it level matches to pink noise. So um, when you're leveling your EQ, you can level match it to pink noise and it will help you then analyze what's going on. You capture it and release and then it will um, allocate the EQ to the pink noise curve. So that's that. Um, next thing here was a compressor. So there's two ways of doing this and this is the why, why I want to talk about this tutorial in the first place. So what I was referring to is upward compression or increasing, um, I guess, compression in the sense of the sides um, and only on the sides. So not anything in the mono side of things, just on the sides of this actual project. So what I did was I kind of drove, drove some of the compression with this standard stock compressor that you get in Studio One. Um, you guys have access to this if you've got Studio One, otherwise you can do this in another DAW. I don't know if you have the splitter tool, but obviously uh, this process is, can be done in other DAWs. Um, so anyway, I put a, a compressor on there and I kind of just drove it a little bit, maybe 2 dB worth of reduction, put auto uh, makeup gain and auto attack and release settings and um, pretty much just allowed it to do what it needed to do. And it kind of made up a little bit of extra um, ambience in that track. So then from there, um, once I got that done, I've kind of fiddled around with this idea of OTT uh, because OTT, what it is, it's a compressor basically in, um, in the sense of it's got three channels. It works in three bands, I should say, and it has upward and downward compression at the same time. You can adjust uh, EQ as well on this side here and the amount is the depth basically. That's the mix dial. Time is uh, the release and in and out, obviously input, output. Um, it's it's an interesting compressor. It's It sometimes works, it sometimes doesn't. But sometimes if you wanna get some extra ambience out of something, you can put the OTT on it. It's actually a plugin that came out of, um, from what my understanding is, Ableton has this plugin. Um, and it's made by X for Records based. They, they pretty much put in another VST that they have as well, um, which is Serum. So anyway, I've kind of fiddled around with this for a bit. I'll play the track to you. Um, part of my talking because I just have to explain all this to you. So I'm going to put some notes into this um, so you guys don't have to be bored. You can select on the bottom there at the, the comments where you want to get up to on this tutorial. So let's play the record for you. Let's see what it sounds like. And I'm going to bounce it out and then I'll show you the aftermath of what happened with that. So let's play it right now.
So this kind of reminds me like of a Resident Evil type thing. Um, I don't even know if it's really a, a music track per se, but it's more like a film score. But anyway, I'll play it to you without the mastering done. What I'm going to do is quickly bounce this out and show you guys um, what the visual sense looks like. And um, then I'll play between the two, mastered, unmastered, and give you guys an idea of what they sound like um, before and after, you know, that type of thing. Um, so by the way, if you don't know how to do what I just did now, it's a mix down, um, it's within the project, you don't actually have to bounce out your file and then bring it back in, you can actually bounce it in your project if you want. Um, you could also use the the project page if you want to do that as well, but I just personally, I don't know, I just don't like using that project page, it's not my thing, I've never used it, <laughs> I've used it maybe once just to see what it did, but um, anyway, just wait for this to do what it's got to do, I'll fast forward this. All right, so we're finally here. So between the two, I'm just going to color code this so you can go, you guys can see what's going on. So let's see the mastered, unmastered version. So you can see there's a lot of difference in the dynamics. Um, the dynamics of this mastered track, it's kind of squashed down quite a fair bit, um, and it is definitely louder. Um, I've done that as much as I possibly could to to get the loudness out of this track. It's not exactly the track you want to squash too much because it is like you can hear like that kind of film score type thing. So you don't want to crush it too much. But between the two, let's go through them and see what they sound like. So first off, I'll just take off all these plugins and just leave the metering on. And um, then we'll just see what they sound like. So first off, the unmastered and then the mastered version. Alright, cool. So pretty much what you could kind of gather, I guess, if you guys are listening on headphones or in your studio, that these uh, two tracks sound somewhat similar. I didn't want to crush it too much, but what you can notice is the width of the stereo sides or the sides of the track uh, come out just a little bit further and you can hear just some more ambience within the track. And that's what I was going for when I was mastering this track. I just wanted to get that little bit more ambience in the in the actual track so I could get it to sound how... I presume that the artist creation uh, creator wanted to wanted it to sound like. So um, that's pretty much this tutorial. I didn't want to go into depth on too much of it. I just wanted to go through a few things with you guys and explain some of that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, otherwise, on the next tutorial, I'm going to go through a few other things with the um, 1176 compressor. I want to do a full history of that and uh, go through that as well. So without further ado, I'll catch you guys in the next one. And peace.